Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming. My name is Gideon Mendels. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Comet ML. At Comet, we like to say we do for machine learning what GitHub did for code. So we work with machine learning teams, and we allow them to automatically track their data sets, code, experiment, and models. But today, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about machine learning teams and really the issues and challenges in running them. Um, but before we kind of dive in, everyone's been talking about deep learning. Um, and indeed, mostly in the academic world, we've, been, we've seen some amazing achievements. So I picked one that I want to talk a little bit about, and that's the ImageNet data set. So for those of you who are not familiar, ImageNet is an image or object detection problem. So given an image, we try to build a model that detects what's the object in it. And that could be anything from cats to common household objects. And if you look at that blue square that's uh, marked over there, uh, that's the first submission of a deep learning model. And essentially, in 2012, uh, we managed to shave 10 absolute percent points from previous years. And this has been a benchmark for a very long time. And afterwards, every year, we keep seeing more improvements from uh, more sophisticated machine learning models up until 2015, where Microsoft submitted ResNet and actually managed to beat human performance on these tasks. And if you look at companies like Google and others that know how to extract business value from machine learning, we're actually seeing exponential growth in the number of the models. So what this chart shows is the number of models in the Google source code repository. And I think one point that's very interesting is we see those models across almost all product areas. So not just traditional machine learning tasks like vision and speech, but anything from drug discovery to maps and Android. And yet, so we live in this machine learning pioneering age, and it's really, really exciting to take part of it. But most of the companies that we speak to are still struggling extracting business value from machine learning. And at Comet, we think that most of the problems are actually our processes and tools, and more specifically, visibility, reproducibility, and collaboration. And I'm going to talk more about that. So um, I want to share a little bit my story. So uh, when I joined Google, I worked on a team of uh, five data scientists working on detecting hate speech on YouTube comments. So unfortunately, if you ever use YouTube, you have an idea how good our model was. But uh, when I joined, the team already had a model in production, right? And I asked, well, what's running in production? And to my surprise, they had a very hard time answering that question. They had no log of history or all the experiments they've done in the last two years. And even, training the, uh, even locating the training data was super challenging because there was 10 versions of it, you know, data set.final, data set.final2, and so on. Uh, it was very hard to tell which one is the right one. And over the past two years, working on Comet, we spoke to hundreds of machine learning teams, and we actually concluded that machine learning teams are broken. So the average machine learning engineer produces only 1.7 production models a year and spends about a year and a half on the job. Now, what happens when that engineer quits? Everything they know goes with them. So of course, companies like Google, Facebook, and the other big tech companies are paying a million dollars a head in acqui hires. These en engineers bring so much experience and experiments with them. And it makes sense, right? Can you run a sales team without a CRM? Can you run a software team with something like GitHub? And with machine learning, we don't have that yet. And that's actually why we started Comet. So I want to go, for those of you who are actually working on machine learning, I try to provide a little bit more value and talk about what is those visibility, reproducibility, and collaboration that I talked about. So we define visibility at Comet as really the ability to access, view, and interact with information regarding your machine learning processes. So answering simple questions like, what's running in production? How do I measure that production model? What data was used to measure those things? And like I said before, what happens if my colleague quits? Can I continue their research from where they stopped, or I have to start from scratch? And once you solve this piece of uh, visibility, you have to move to the next level, which is reproducibility, which is essentially the ability to take a set of steps in a recipe, run through them, and get to the same result. And reproducibility is really, really hard. Data, incoming data could change, whether because uh, it's streaming data or someone shuffled it differently, inconsistent hyperparameters, 
Switching from TensorFlow 1.0 to 1.1, for example, will give you different results. And some of the machine learning models or neural network models actually have inherent stochasticity in them, specifically uh, dropout layers, which makes it even harder to reproduce. And then the last piece is collaboration. So most of the team we know are actually a room full of lone wolves. And that's because it's really, really hard to collaborate on ML. Uh, so when I was doing that work, I had two options. I could take a screenshot and email it to someone or ask him to come look at my screen. Um, and we don't think that's how that should be done. So you might ask yourself, what does the ideal solution look like? And if you take anything from today's talk is whatever you decide to use, whether you build it or buy it, it has to be automated. Because if you're going to require your data scientists to manually tag and document every piece of the process, you're bound to fail. Machine learning is a very iterative and creative process, and you want to foster it, not slow it down. And finally, you need something that works with any type of infrastructure, whether it's the data scientist laptop or a cloud provider, and any kind of tool. So like I mentioned at the start, at Comet, we like to say we do for machine learning what GitHub did for code. We allow companies to regain control over their most valuable assets, specifically around data, code, and models. For the first time ever, we actually provide visibility into machine learning experiments. So if you used to be a software engineer, you know the notion of uh, uh, commit history. We have the same thing with experiments. And finally, collaboration. So you can document, you can list your work, and you can share it around the experimentation history. So I have a super quick demo video. Um, so this is what a user or a data science see when they first sign up to Comet. We support all the popular machine learning libraries. Um, and once you pick your library, we ask you to install our SDK once and really just copy a few lines of code into your current workflow. We don't replace your infrastructure or workflow. So no need to go into the details of the code here, but we're just pasting this and training this model. And as soon as it starts training, it actually emits all that crucial information back to the cloud. So your visualization and results, full snapshot of your code, so you can always reproduce your work. Additionally, we keep track of your hyperparameters, metrics, um, really all the information that you need to reproduce an experiment, and also, like I mentioned, something very simple like notes. So you can type uh, something and then click the share button and Slack it or email it to a colleague. It's hard to uh, speak in sync with a video. Um, but once, once, you, uh, once you share it, of course, those, that data scientist can look at everything you've done and kind of continue work. Another feature our customers really, really love is the ability to compare two different models. So what this view shows you is how those models converge differently. But if I click the code tab here, I can actually see what are the code differences that generate those different results. Same for hyperparameters, metrics, and really everything we know about the model. One last thing is the ability to visualize all of your experimentation history or parameter space. So if I'm a manager, I might only care about test accuracy. But what this view allows you to see is essentially your parameter space. So just by eyeballing this, I could shave about 50 or 60% of the parameter search just by looking at which parameter tend to outperform the others. All right. So a comet, we think that in the near future, those processes and standard will become standardized. And your ability to act upon that and have something like that in place will, in fact, impact your ability to extract value from machine learning and use it as a competitive advantage. Thank you so much. For the, sorry if I missed, for the reproducibility, um, you need to have the data, right? It's not just the code. That's a big difference between the GitHub for developers and the GitHub for data scientists. You need the data. How does, how does that work? Yeah, definitely. So for reproducibility, you need a few pieces. You need the code, the hyperparameters, which is essentially a form of configuration, and the data. Um, so we have two modes to handle that. Uh, for our enterprise customers, we actually uh, store the data for them. And on the cloud version, we take a pointer and a hash, so you know if something changed. OK. And uh, is that completely private? So it's GitHub as in sharing internally, as in private Git, or is there a public community? 
So it's a great question. So we have two products, Comet.ml, which is a public platform that everyone can sign up. There's a it's free for public projects and uh, paid for private ones. And then we have Comet Enterprise, which is hosted on-premise or VPC. OK. And there's a concept of stars, just uh, like you have on GitHub? No we, no, we don't have stars on okay. Yeah, okay. working on it. OK, very good. That's the 2.0 version. <laughs> uh, good. I uh, want to leave plenty of time for people to ask questions. Um, so uh, Jack has a mic, so feel free to raise your hand whenever. Um, Maybe tell us a little, yeah, go. Run, run, run. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about the, the company, how long have you been around, how many employees, your funding history, any, anything you can share? Sure, definitely. So we've been around for about two years. Uh, we started with the Amazon Techstars Accelerator, uh, raised our seed round in November, so all the details are on Crunchbase if anyone is interested. Uh, we're based here in Soho. Uh, we work actually from the Two Sigma building. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're a team of 10, uh, eight of us are here and two are remote. And hiring for six more if anyone's uh, looking for a job. Six more? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As I was saying earlier, like, it's, anyway, that's my, uh, what makes me happy as an organizer of this event is like how many people have actually found jobs, connected, found customers, found investors right here in the room. Uh, anyway. Sure, yeah. So regarding uh, AutoML or AutoML platforms, the way we see it is if all the companies in the world are going to have the same AutoML algorithms, it's going to be very hard to build competitive advantage around it. Um, so we think companies will continue to have kind of uh, dedicated teams building that. Um, and we still think that uh, that's always going to be in code because it's very challenging to build things like that with, uh, with a GUI. Um, specifically about MLflow, so if you take a look at the... Um, the SDK you see is pretty similar to what we built. Um, and uh, our part of the uh, challenges in building a product like that is, is essentially a big data product. Those uh, models report like 5 million data points in one hour. Um, MLflow is designed to run in a single machine. We're much more scalable, and we work with uh, pretty big customers with very big machine learning teams. Thanks, Gideon. Quick question: The customers you do have, what do they, what do they love about your particular product? What is the one thing that they're saying? Wow, this is something you do that I don't see anybody else doing. So it depends who you ask at that uh, company. Uh, if you'd ask the manager, they would say it's visibility and the ability to see who is working on what. Uh, if you ask the organization, it's really about maintaining institutional knowledge and not losing all that information. And if you ask the data scientists, it starts from this basic thing of knowing what I ran yesterday and what result I had, and into like the more insights of visualizing parameter space and better understanding your models. Can you compare your product with uh, Domino Labs, the model management function? Yeah, so Domino is a, like an end-to-end solution turnkey that replaces version control, orchestration, productionization, production monitoring. Uh, we think that's a great fit for companies that are less technical. Our customers have very complex stacks, and for us to try to replace everything with one product is very, it's, it's impossible for those customers. We integrate with your workflow. We don't ask you to replace anything. So, uh, A, we allow you to really, in a fine-grained way, to decide what you report to Comet. So it could be just result with no code. It's completely up to the user. And then on top of that, the manager has a bill. So there's you know, three personas. There's a developer, a manager, and an admin. And you can control read-write permissions and so on. Those were great questions. Thank you yeah, very much. You. Um, all right, I think we're out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me.